Day 24, the power of successful relationships. You know, I have a unique privilege on an ongoing basis of having people ask me, gosh, what makes your life work? How come you're so successful? And as I really look at that question deeply, the answer that comes up for me over and over again is that the quality of my life really is the quality of my relationships. Everything that I can see that is great in my life has come out of my interactions with people I really care about. You know, right now it's 2 o'clock a.m., and I'm finishing up here in the studio these last few tapes and my messages to you. And I just hung up the phone with the lady of my life, Becky, who really has transformed me. You know, uh, she is the strength and the power in my life. I, I have to say that I've always been committed to success and I've always been an achiever and made things happen. But the relationship that I've developed with my wife is probably the single most powerful thing that's molded me and created for me the level of joy that I really experience in my life. I had the success, but being able to share it with somebody I really care about at the deepest level has created the depth of my life. You know, it's kind of like I can remember, uh, to give you a simple metaphor, what it felt like when I used to go to a movie and I'd be at the movie and the movie was like so great. And I'd turn and realize I was there by myself experiencing it. And I know that you can enjoy a movie that way, but to me it just doesn't seem to be quite the same. And I feel the same way in life, that every one of us deserves to have that incredibly rich experience of having the texture of life called relationship. And I don't know where you are in your life right now, whether you be married or single, or whether you have somebody special in your life or not, but I thought we might just take a few minutes and chat about some of the things at least that have worked for me and the people that I've had the good fortune to spend time with who seem to have relationships that really work. And I think I'd like to start by just saying this. The biggest challenge that people have in relationships that keep them from having the level of intimacy and love that they really want is they're looking for a relationship to be the solution to their problems. And the reality is, if you're going to a relationship to change your life, to change who you are, or what you're experiencing, you're using a relationship in a way that disempowers you and the person that you want to be closest to. I think that if you want a relationship to work, there are some cardinal rules that we really have to live by. And there are some skills we have to follow through on. And I think the cardinal rules are, number one, that instead of going to a relationship to get something out of it, if you want a relationship that works, you must approach relationship in a totally different way. And that is you must think of a relationship as something that you come to to give something to rather than something you go to to take something out. What I mean by that is if you're always looking at the people in your life that you care about most and your thoughts are, how can I give to this person I love? How can I create more joy, more pleasure, more happiness, more love for this person? If your focus is consistently on that, then in order to give, you have to put yourself in that loving place. If you're always coming from that frame, then the person you're in a relationship with will always be trying to do the same with you. You know, what you put out does come back tenfold, and the greatest place to experience that is with someone that you're totally intimate with. So if relationships are such rich experiences and offer us this much back for the small investment we put in them, how come so few people develop relationships that work? I think the answer is really simple, that relationships come down to states. I mean, that sounds a little weird, but really think about it. How do you know what the quality of your relationship is? The only way you know the quality of a relationship is based upon how you feel about it. The connection you have with that person. When you think about them, what are the emotions that you generate in your own body? Whatever you associate to that relationship is the quality of the relationship. So what I'd like to talk about here is not only how to make relationships work, but what are the two factors that cause most relationships to die? Because we've all had that initial ignition experience where all of a sudden there's this incredible excitement and attraction. Remember that when you first met somebody you were totally attracted to and you thought you were in love? Maybe you were. Remember you met this person and God, the minute you were with them, you just felt so incredible. You felt happy all the time for no reason. You started seeing things you hadn't seen before. You began to sing stupid songs in your car and stuff. Maybe in the middle of the night you thought of them and you called them up and said, were you thinking of me? And they said, yes, I was. And you thought, oh God, this is so great. There was this incredible connection. But then maybe through the years, that changed. Maybe through the years, what happened is the level of intensity was not as high or gradually began to drop. How come? Well, there's a law in life that a lot of people fail to pay attention to, and it really costs them major. And the reason is it kind of creeps up on them. And I call it the law of familiarity. The law of familiarity simply says this. If you're around anything enough, you take it just a little bit for granted. And unfortunately, I think that's one of the big killers of human intimacy. 
you know, we get caught up. In the beginning, there's these fireworks, and everything is phenomenal, and it's just absolutely incredible. And you think about the person constantly, and everything they do is just absolutely wonderful. And then it just gradually drops down. Not because you don't care, not because you don't love the person anymore, but because you didn't do the things you did in the beginning to make the relationship work. You didn't maintain them. You got caught up in your job, and making a living, and doing your business, and studying something new. I don't know what it was, but it happens for most people. Something I want to make sure I certainly avoid in my relationship, and thus far I've been successful in doing. How do you make sure that you don't fall in this trap? Well, one way is, first of all, just becoming aware that the trap exists. It's amazing what awareness can do. Awareness by itself can sometimes be curative. But in addition, I have developed an incredible sensitivity for the impact of states on my relationship. In other words, you got to remember that any time human beings are in tense feeling states, that anything that happens around them consistently while they're in that state gets linked up. Remember what I was talking about that during anchoring? Well, specifically, what happens in relationships? Well, people in the beginning, everything is wonderful, but then gradually they're around each other while they're in other states. Maybe states where they feel upset and has nothing to do with each other. Maybe one of the members of the relationship goes to a major financial challenge, for example, or an emotional challenge with another family member, a mom, a dad, someone passes away. And the trauma and the pain and the frustration of those experiences, unfortunately, can be so intense that a person is feeling them while they're around their spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend, or significant other, until pretty soon those negative feelings literally get linked to the person they're in a relationship with. To the point that when they finally get around that person, they begin to feel those lousy feelings. Remember, the brain uses the law of recency to make connections, meaning, Anything that's happening around you while you're in an intense state like that, that happens within that recent period of time, gets linked up, right, wrong, or indifferent, intelligent or not. Invariably, negative anchors are what destroy relationships. That's the number one killer. Again, what do I mean by that? Well, people get together and they have an argument, and they don't clear the argument up, and they begin to link more pain to each other than pleasure. When that happens at a deep enough level, we eventually go through a state we call threshold. Threshold is when there's just much more pain in your mind than pleasure in the relationship, and your brain says, I have had it. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say a couple gets in an argument, and it's a very intense argument, and their feelings start to expand. And do you ever notice how when you get into state sometimes, that that intensity begins to grow? In fact, have you ever got an argument where you were so intensely involved in the argument, you forgot what you were arguing for, but you knew you had to win? You remember a time like that? Well, the challenge with that kind of situation is, as we get more and more into state, we tend to feel stronger and stronger, and pretty soon, we may say things or do things that later on we'll regret. The problem is the damage is already done. And if we have strong enough intensity, people get angry enough while they see each other's face, more angry, see each other's face, really angry, see each other's face, pretty soon they begin to link negative neuroassociations, major pain to being with this person. Now, it doesn't usually happen overnight, but through a series of years or experience after experience after experience, people eventually build up enough pain that they go through a threshold state. What that means is their brain finally gets to the point that says, this is way too painful for the little bit of pleasure I'm getting back. I have had it. It is over. And that's how relationships primarily die. How do you keep that from ever happening? One, you become incredibly aware of the power of your states. You realize that whenever you're in an angry state, whatever's happening around you, whoever's around you is getting linked up. So if you're upset and it's not about your spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend or significant other, make sure you're not focusing on looking at them while you're in these states. Otherwise, whether you want to do it or not, negative anchors are forming. Two, also pay attention that if you're in an argument, you don't want to end that argument staying angry for any length of time. Otherwise, what you're doing is strengthening the anchor of pain to the relationship. So. The best way to have an argument, if you want to do one, is make it a spirited debate, but make it short. Make it intense, make it short, and stop it. Don't let it get out of control where you get into state and start saying and doing things that don't support you. How can you get out of the loop if you're stuck there? Do what we talked about earlier. Use pattern interrupts. Again, my wife Becky and I, when I first met her, I said, Honey, you know, I absolutely love you. And no matter how much two people love each other, there are going to be times when they're going to have a difference of opinion. When they're going to have